Hello, welcome to today's lecture on pavement materials. In this video, I am going to give a small introduction on the pavement materials that are used for construction. So, before going further, I expect you know what is a pavement. So, from the civil engineering point of view, it is nothing but a structure. It is used by both the pedestrians and the vehicles for commuting and transporting the loads from one place to another place. So, people who are talking by foot, they are going to use this pavement as well as the vehicles like cars, buses, these are going also going to use this pavement. So, actually it is a civil engineering structure that is actually carrying some load. So, it will have some design requirements because it is taking low it might break or it might fail if you don't design it properly right that's it so moving on to the next slide so like any structure it will have different components here in the case of pavement the it is nothing but different layers different components are different layers here so a pavement will have different layers one is embankment in the case of embankment roads, embankment would be there. And next layer, it is a subgrade layer. It is the bottommost layer. You might be knowing it from the basics of highway engineering. A pavement will have different layers. And in the case of embankment roads, the bottommost layer will be embankment. And above that, a subgrade layer would be there. And above that, a subbase and base layer would be there. So actually the sub base layer is an optional layer in cases where the condition of soil is not good, where the bearing capacity of the soil is poor and where high amount of traffic is coming onto the road or you are expecting high amount of traffic on the road which you are constructing. You are going to put this sub base layer otherwise it might be absent in some cases. So sub base layer may present or may not present and next layer is base layer it will be present on the subgrade layer if sub base layer is not present it will be above the subgrade layer if sub base layer is present it will be present above this sub base layer and next layer is where goes it will be obviously present above the base layer so these are different layers that will present in a pavement so each layer has its own purpose so first if you take the subgrade layer sorry if you take the embankment layer it is the bottom most layer it provides the support for the pavement construction in the sense it is nothing but a ground surface actually but to raise the elevation of the pavement we are going to construct an embankment okay so this embankment will be made up of soil or sometimes with aggregates and soil that is some stones and aggregates stones is stones is nothing but aggregates actually so sometimes it will be made with stones and soil together and sometimes some cement may also, may also be used so depending upon the situation we will adopt different materials for the construction of this particular embankment and after constructing the embankment depending upon our requirement we might use some protective measures like use of usage of geotextiles and retaining walls like this okay so above this embankment subgrade layer would be there this is the bottom most layer in a pavement as we have already discussed so the purpose of this subgrade layer is to is it has to transfer the loads safely from the above layers to the natural ground if embankment is absent normally the subgrade layer will lie above the normal ground surface so the purpose of this subgrade layer is to transfer the loads that are coming from the top layers that is this base layer and wearing course to the natural ground surface in a safe manner okay that is the purpose of subgrade layer so normally it will be made of soil and coming to the other layers that is sub base and base layers so these will have these are going to take the load immediately from the surface course that is wearing course okay whatever vehicles that are traveling or whatever load that is falling onto the pavement it will be primarily 
taken by this base and sub base layers so these these are going to have more load intensity on them compared to the bottom layers that is subgrade and embankment layers so the materials which we are using in this base and sub base layers must be suitably strong and sufficiently strong compared to the bottom layers so this will have more specification in terms of strength stiffness and other parameters compared to the bottom layers so normally aggregates such as gravel are used in the case of base layers okay and moving on to the next layer it is a varying course a varying course is nothing but riding surface in some cases or sometimes it is just below the surface layer or that whatever layer we will use it for the riding okay riding the vehicles so it actually provides a riding surface in most of the cases so it should provide a smooth surface for safe and um, easy commuting of the vehicles so we are going to use some binding materials here such as bitumen tar or in the case of rigid pavements we will adopt some cement concrete and whereas bitumen and tar we are going to use it in the case of flexible pavements so depending upon our requirement we are going to use different materials for the construction of the pavement so this is it so and the each layer has its each pavement layer has its own purpose so the type of materials which we are using in these pavement layers are different and have and should process certain properties so this is a small picture that represents the pavement vertical cross section as we have already discussed the subgrade layer will be the bottom most layer in the case of embankment roads embankment would be there at the bottom of this subgrade and above that sub base layer would be there and above that base layer would be there and above that a binder course and above that surface course would be there these two together i'm calling it as a varying course that's it so these are different types of pavement materials that are normally used soil sand stone aggregates cement bitumen tiles etc so soil is normally used in the sub base layers shoulders whereas the sand it will be sometimes used to in the base layer itself or sometimes it will be used in along with the soil in the subgrade layer so the soil and sand are normally used in different layers and sand soil is most mostly used in the subgrade layers and it also used for construction of the embankment and it all it is also the most used material in the construction of the shoulders coming to the soil aggregates these are normally used in the construction of base layer and sub base layer because these base layer and sub base layer will take high amount of load compared to the bottom layers and cement and bitumen so if you are constructing a rigid pavement you are going to use cement concrete in your top layer so cement is going to be used there when when if you are if you are constructing a flexible pavement it should be bitumen and in some cases of parking ways such type of pavements you are going to use tiles so these are different types so a pavement is normally subjected to various conditions various conditions in the sense it will be subjected to various weather changes it will yeah, it will take some loads such as impact loads imposed loads suppose if you see in most of the countries weather pattern will not be same that is it will change from time to time suppose if you take an example of india the weather pattern is a cyclic in the sense first summer would be there after the summer rainy season will be there after rainy season again winter will be there so there will be drastic changes from one particular point of time to another time that is in terms of temperature in terms of moisture content so whatever pavement materials you are using for the construction those should be able to withstand these adverse weather conditions in the sense withstand these weather changes and the thing is impact loads normally these impact loads will come onto the picture when the vehicles are traveling on the speed breaker or there might be a situation when an accident might occur in those situation also impact loads will occur onto the pavement so whatever pavement materials you are using those should be able to withstand these sudden impact loads impact loads in the sense you know these are a sudden loads so the materials which you are using in the pavement 
those should be able to withstand this impact loads and i hope that you know what are impulse loads these are normal loads that are kept on the pavement so this will be this load amount would be available over a duration over a duration that is if i am giving some 20 kg it, that 20 kg is going to be there on the pavement for certain time period suppose if i am taking vehicular traffic even though the vehicles are moving from one particular point to another particular point that is one place to another place another vehicle is going to come on to that next place come on to that place come and occupy that particular point so there will be continuous load on that particular point so this is nothing but imposed load so it is actually we can say that it has varying imposed load so there should be some desirable properties that a payment material must possess first thing is the pavement materials should not undergo excessive deformation and settlement so you know what is deformation deformation in the sense so it is a disturbance right so disturbance in terms of shape disturbance in terms of elevation elevation if it is elevation we will call it as settlement so whatever pavement material we are using it should not go undergo deformation if it undergoes deformation there might be a possibility of settlement which is not safe and not s comfortable for the vehicle operations so a pavement should not undergo excessive deformation and settlement if you want to make this situation so if you want to make this happen it should not undergo excessive deformation settlement your pavement materials must be strong next differential settlement and whatever pavement you are constructing if there should not be any differential settlements if you are using poor quality of the materials and if the properties are changing from one place to another place under load conditions there will be certain settlement and that settlement will not be uniform at all the places because of this differential settlement occur and if this differential settlement is happening in the case of rigid fa rigid pavements it there's those payments cannot take the deformation comfortably so there will be possibility of there is a possibility of cracks that is nothing but failure of the payment so there should not be any deformation settlement to ensure that there will not be any deformation differential settlement so whatever materials you are using in the construction of payment those should possess uniform and uh, uniform properties throughout the length and next high compressibility and plastic properties are not desirable for the pavement construction if the pavement materials that is suppose soil is having high compressibility and plastic properties so definitely there is going to be some excessive deformation and settlement suppose if the, so if the pavement soil is having high compressibility it is going to settle in a heavily and if it is highly plastic there is going to be heavy volume changes depending upon the weather pattern so these are not suitable for a pavement so there should be good quality soil as well as good quality aggregates for the construction of the pavement so soil is normally the main constituent in the subgrade and embankment we have already discussed this thing and aggregates are normally used in the construction of sub base and base layer and aggregates and binding materials are used in the top layer so these are the different functions of the pavement layers subgrade and embankment provide support for the pavement and different types of failures occur if the materials which we are not which we are using in the pavement are poor that is if you are using poor soil there is going to be some cracking or there is going to be some showing in the case of flexible pavements so aggregate does have an important impact on the life and service of the pavement this thing we have already discussed so this is it so in the next lecture we will see more about these pavement materials so there are different pavement materials we have already discussed soil aggregates and bitumen these are the primary materials which we are using so in the next lecture we are going to discuss more about the soil so what how soil is important in the construction of pavement what are the desirable properties of the soil how to evaluate the strength and other properties of the soil so for that we are going to conduct some tests so what are the different tests and how to conduct them these things we are going to see in our next lecture so thanks for listening